Welcome to Soccer Talk, a podcast about soccer, mostly in Iowa, presented by Kick It Forward. Kick It Forward is a positive disruptor to the Iowa soccer community. Thanks to our sponsors, Scott Insurance Services and Michael Keener, attorney at law. You need legal help. You need insurance help. Those are the two to contact. That's right. Welcome to the show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Iowa soccer supporters. Welcome to Soccer Talk. I'm here with my good buddy, Blake Sievers. Blake, what's up, dude? Hey, Ben. Good to, uh, good to chat with you tonight. Um, got a cool little pod tonight and some pretty interesting stories from uh, a Iowa legend is what you called him. Well, I mean, that's the series, the segment. Okay, well, it's a good thing that you've got your serious face on tonight. I'm not going to jibber-jabber. Let's just get to it. We're pretty excited to talk with Elvira Ibisevich tonight. Uh, Blake and I have both coached him at a certain point in our careers, and uh, he was a generous young man with his time this evening. So let's do it. All right, Elvira Ibisevich. Did I say it right? Ibisevich? Ibisevich. Abisevich. Elvir Abisevich. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you guys? We're pretty good. I mean, I'm good. Blake, how are you? Yeah, I'm as good as can be right now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Elvir, usually Blake kind of kicks us off. Uh, so, I'll just let him take it. Sweet. Um, and so, again, I'm sure our listeners are like, this thing again, but... Um, I'm assuming you've done your homework and listened um, to what are we? What episode is this now? Been sixty or so? Alvira's um, sixty-one. The first sixty-one. Okay. The first question always is: Is this the first podcast you've ever been on? Uh, it's not. It's probably like my third. I just did one last week for uh, a <laughs> fan group in Omaha. So I did one uh, last week. Who gives a hoot podcast? For who? Out to who gives a hoot? Like an owl hoot, who gives a hoot. That's a cool, that's cool. I like that. Great. So, so it's for the team? Out. Yeah, so it's like a fan group from the from the team. So Sweet. They have, they have players on all the time. and So that was one. You said three. You, this would be your third. What's the other one? I'm trying to think. I don't know. Roscoe hit me up about doing one for the IODP, so that's coming up. So this is the second. Right. That, that'll be the third. <laughs> we'll that'll be the third. <laughs> Thank it. Well, we're, we're excited to have you on. Um, I assume you have not listened to the podcast, but you are on as a segment, uh, a part of Iowa Soccer Legends series. So you're the youngest legend I think that we've had on. Is that right, Blake? That's probably, that's, that's right. Correct, but yep. <laughs> See, this is the delay we have to deal with over here. But uh, I mean, there's a bunch of reason reasons, but uh, I mean, basically we're just excited to talk to you and kind of learn about what you've been up to. Um, you and I have a, maybe like a very brief, but like old history, like, you know, I got to coach you for a little bit. And so I've known you for a while. Um, but I mean, to be fair, it really wasn't that long ago that I coached you and now here we are. Yep. So maybe well, just, I mean, that's funny, Ben. Uh, if you don't mind me jumping in. No, I'd love uh, it if you would. I I think like, this makes me feel or us feel old, right? Because I mean, Elvira, I think, I mean, I worked with you when you You're guys were like 11, 12, and then 22, yeah. But yeah, since I started, yeah. I, said, I was nine when I was playing the U11 with uh, all those guys. I was playing a year up, so I was, nine, I was nine years old. They were all 10, but that's when I started with uh, the whole JOC thing. But, yeah, I mean, Ben, Blake, those are your, your boys. That Blake, that you were the coach. I mean, I worked with I worked with the group. Uh, it's like Paul O'Connor um, yeah, was Paul. was like the man, right? Yeah. Over here. Yeah, he was. He was our coach at first, and his son Lewis was there too. He was a he was a beast back then. But uh, <laughs> we had a good team since we since we started, and we all stuck through the whole the whole time almost that whole group. That's super cool. Uh, well, so before we like dig deep into your your youth career, uh, 
tell us, well, maybe that's later. Let's, let's go back to that later. So you, when did you come to start playing for the John Sermondale? I mean, you were like, you, you five, you six, you seven, something like that. Right when I started. So, I mean, we moved to the States when I was two and okay. then from Bosnia, we immigrated over. And right when I could sign up, when I was in kindergarten, I was, I was five years old. And that's when I started playing for uh, Johnson Soccer Club. Um, gotcha. And so then you played through all the way until the inaugural Sporting Iowa group yep, where yep. Johnson, Urbandale, and Weston Wayne all kind of merged. And then uh, – but you're, you're mostly like a Johnson guy, right? Johnson, yes. I mean, I lived in Urbandale, but everything – played for Johnson, went to Johnson, all that. So. Blake knows Johnson. about that. Blake was an urban. That's a good path. <laughs> yeah, it's a good path, Elvira. There you go. Yeah, Blake lived in Urbandale and played for Johnson all his life. There you go. Okay, so tell us just kind of about your soccer, um, you know, your youth soccer career, and then like you know maybe up to where we talked about before you started to think about going to college. Yeah, so uh, like we were just saying, I started at Johnston, and I went through all the little youth teams there, U5, U6, all that until, and I mean, even my dad and my mom, they know this better than I do, but they took me to every camp there was in the summer, all that stuff. There's like a Pegasus thing going on when I was young, went to all that, but uh, through all that. And then when I was nine, that's when um, I could play the, J or JOC. I mean, it wasn't, I don't know if it was JOC, I think it was, but uh, I was nine. And you have uh, siblings that played Elvier? Yeah, my brother plays. He's younger, but he's he's graduating this year. He played for JOC for a little while, but he was at Menace. He was at Des Moines Menace for the most part. But um, so, Elvir, we had we had Armin on the other day, um, and I just think it's interesting. I don't know if it's uh, if it's the Bosnian culture or whatnot, but he would play with his dad and all these older guys, yeah. you know, growing up. Um, yeah. Just because I mean, you talk about you playing up a couple years in the club scene. Did you play with some of the older, um, older guys, you know, in the Bosnian kind of community yeah, as you yeah. grew up? Yeah, I did. And uh, my dad used to play before too, but uh, as he got older, he kind of stopped because of his knees. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I played with all those guys, and there's some really good, really good older players. I mean, they played back in Bosnia and all that stuff, so they're all super experienced and they're older, so they know what they're doing. But, uh, yeah, they play every, every Sunday it was when I went. Like every Wednesday and Sunday, they'd get together, and if it's out, if it's nice, it's outside. If it's winter time, they'd be playing indoor futsal. So I was always playing with with older men growing up and stuff. So yeah, I mean, knowing having played with you and uh, coached you, it's clear that you've that's kind of like part of your deal is you you've played in that in that uh, arena where you've dealt with some some louder voices. Probably, I think is the way yeah. to say it. Um, so Blake and I also played, I, th I think it's your cousin, right? Vidad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So like, I mean, how much was that an influence on you? Like we played against Vidad when we were seniors, juniors or seniors and you're on the team, right? Blake, when we played with attack against, um, yeah. And then, yeah. And then we played against him with the menace when he was like down in St. Louis too, a couple years later. I mean, um, but I think that, let's, what kind of, what's that like having a role model like that? And Elvira prefaced like who he is and his history because I mean I he's arguably the top um, the best resume from a player I think that I've played against. So I some people yeah, may not know who we're talking about for, here. That's definitely true for me too. Yeah. So uh, just like I did, he came to the states with his parents. They came over here to St. Louis, and he was already in high school when um, when they moved over. He, he was older. He's a uh, eighty five. I want to say eighty four. So is this but, like your father's? brother's son um it's my so it's my my grandpa and his his grandpa are brothers okay gotcha yeah so um where was i yeah so he they moved to st louis so we were in des moines but they're in st louis but we have we have a bunch of family down there and he was in high school and then he um ended up going to st louis university SWU, and his freshman year he was an all-american he had 18 something goals i just posted on my instagram story the other day they did a little throwback on their on their page and it was one of his goals from the national tournament but uh yeah and then after his freshman year that's when he he left and he went to psg he signed for psg when he was 18 and i mean psg back then wasn't what they what they are now but still a huge club nonetheless 
and they had a Bosnian coach at the time there. So he brought him over. He uh, one of the scouts on play in the U.S. And they brought him over to the U21 national team. And then after that, he also uh, he signed for PSG. But uh, he didn't. I don't think he played at all there. He went on loan to like a second division team, and then went over to Germany. And that's where he he made his career. He played for a club there, and then he signed for Hoffenheim, who was who was coming up then. And that's where he. That's where he took off in Hoffenheim. After that, Stuttgart, Hertha. So, so I assume there. you've you've chatted with him over the years. Yeah. Now, now I was just recently in Germany. He was only two hours away. He's in Berlin right now, and I was in Leipzig, so I went and visited him once. Uh, I had a free weekend, so I went and saw him and his family, and I was up there. That's but, pretty cool. So, yeah. yeah and talk, I mean, you kind of followed a little bit in his path going going over to Europe. Um, I'm just curious. Was there advice? Yeah, is he jump, giving you we're advice? We're skip over everything. Just All like over. let's talk about. No, I know you're. I mean, Blake, you're right. This is the most interesting stuff, and we don't want to waste our time talking about Elvira playing at, like Johnson High School. Now we will come back to that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Elvira, I mean, super cool. Like, got a chance to go over there and play a little bit, and then, I mean, obviously, that what you're up to now is super neat as well. But I kind of talk about like what's led you in the last, most recent times of here and. What was that? Uh, talk about like what in the most recent times what kind of have led you to where you're at now like you know so you uh you went to uh university of nebraska omaha yep yeah so i'll, I'll just start there but uh, so I, uh my coach that was my coach now too uh jason mims he was the uno coach at the time and uh i was actually with the JOSC, the sporting iowa team um, it was August. It was like a preseason thing. And we went down and played the U18 Sporting KC team, like a little friendly thing. And uh, he emailed me the week, uh, the week before. He said he was going to come down and watch me play. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, like, I didn't think much of it. And um, he came down and we started the game. We went up 3-0 in the first half. And I had a first half hat trick that game. The game ended up, we lost 4-3 in the last minute. But in the first half, I had three goals, left foot, right foot, and a header. So a complete hat trick, and he was there. And um, after that, we, we kept talking and talking. And that, that winter, I went uh, with my Region 2 ODP team down to Florida. We had that interregional tournament, and I did well there as well. And um, that's when the U17 residency program, national team, they scouted me then, and uh, they invited me for that upcoming semester coming year so um but before then I had already verbally committed to UNO I before I even left for that I told coach I was going to come and then as soon as I got down there I got with the group all top guys they're playing all over the world now so many great players but uh that's when the phone started ringing all the big schools were calling but I'd already uh sort of made up my mind because of what he was what he was telling me what you know my role in the team right away from the start and I knew if I went to a bigger school that that wouldn't be the case right away my freshman year. I wouldn't be playing much. So that that's what kind of made me stick with UNO. And, so uh, I got a couple of questions, Elvira. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, on that note, what, I'm curious, um, what other schools did you look at? And then we always love the names. Uh, drop some names on us who you, uh, you know, who was in the residency with us, who you played on the U17s with. So yeah, you school. mentioned being coached by Jason Mims, but some of the other coaches and, yeah, players for sure. Yeah, cool. But uh, for schools, I really wasn't looking at many schools. I was only a sophomore at the time, so I wasn't emailing any schools or anything. It was just, a, you know, basically there's those showcases, there's all these coaches, send out some emails, whatever. but I wasn't really interested in any schools. And that was the first school that really, you know, offered me or came in contact with me. So that's that was also a big, big, big thing too because – um, it was my first one, you know, so, but, uh, other schools when I went down there, um, I talked to a coach from Villanova, talked to a couple other bigger schools, but they were far away from home. That was also a, a big thing for me. I knew in, in Omaha, my parents could come to every game. It's only a two hour drive. So they could just get in the car and come to the game and then leave right after. So that played a huge part too. But, uh, yeah, down at residency, a lot of, a lot of big names. Um, let's see. Christian Pulisic was there for two weeks uh, before Who's a game. Who? Christian Pulisic. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. <laughs> oh, I thought you were being. I thought you were being. <laughs> the delay, the technology delay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes me sound much more confused. It's good. Yeah. 
but uh, he was there for two weeks before we had a game. I didn't play, but I was still on the on the big roster, but not the match roster for that game. But he came over. Um, he was there for two weeks, and then he went back to Germany after. Oh my! Freaking cat is walking across the laptop. <laughs> Dude, what's what's your cat's name? I just adopted him not too long. I'll get back to the story, but his name is Mamba. Ooh, or, uh, awesome! Why, <laughs> why, why do why do you have a cat? I just adopted one. I'm here by myself, so I might as might as well have a little buddy with me. <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, back to the names of the players there. Um, <laughs> Haji Wright, Nick Tadigui. Um, they were both in Schalke. Haji's in Netherlands somewhere now. Um, West McKinney wasn't there at the time. He was before, and then he came after I left. Um, then a bunch of guys playing in the MLS now. John Nelson for Cincinnati now, or FC Dallas, sorry. Brandon Vasquez, FC Cincinnati. I could go on. There's a bunch of them. But, um, yeah, super, super high level. And just being in that environment, it only made you better. So, well, and Elvira, I mean, like you know, I obviously I got to play with you as a you know like a, a crappy assistant coach back when you were a sporting <laughs> guy, uh, but it was always, uh, well, sorry, what, where where I was going with this is like it was really fun. Then when you came back, we were joking with you before we started the interview about coming to the kick a forward tournament there. Like your after your, I think it was after your freshman year at UNO. Uh, and I mean, other than the fact that Matthew Holmes outscored you that weekend, uh, (laughs) I still, I, I still do remember, uh, just, you know, like you had sort of, uh, you changed your game or you'd upped it a level, you know, you'd really kind of polished some things and, uh, grown up a little bit. And I was kind of like, uh, you know, glad I didn't have to play against you basically. Yeah. (laughs) No, it was just fun being with all those, all those old teammates, Tristan, Armin. Luke, all those guys, you know, it's always, it's always a good time with them. Yeah, for sure. But so like, what's it like, um, you know, when you go and play again, I mean, I, cause obviously like, you know, we both love those guys a whole lot, but like you go play with those guys as a group and then you show up to residency and you know, like that's a group of 20 guys. that's, you know, you know, yeah. pretty slick. So like, what's, what's that like in training for you? And like, how do you deal with, you know, I'm sure that the level of, um, you know, the co- required level by your coaches, the demand mm-hmm. is, is, pretty high what's what's that like to go from that like to make that adjustment yeah of course I mean when I first got there um there was three new guys that semester when I came in it was me um the center back and another center mid um and we had the beep test right away that second day and us three were literally the last three I finished second to last the center back finished last and the attacking mid finished ahead of me but we were the last three so (laughs) and I just showed uh those guys have been training at a higher level than we have at our at our clubs wherever we were you know so but uh with time I mean it takes a little while for you to get get your feet under you maybe like two three weeks but once you get in the rhythm and uh you get used to it and they get used to you and you just doesn't become you don't really think about it much you just you just play everyone there has a talent everyone's good and you're just improving every day yeah, I mean, Blake, you've you've been through that before. I, I would say, like, I've been through that before, uh, and it's like a, it's a, it's an accomplishing feeling, right? Like, you feel good about it. But it's and and you know, yours has probably been a little bit. That was probably a little more dramatic of an in, incline. But like, you yeah, know, we, we've all had that. Like, whatever whatever the jump is, and I mean, what, so like, okay, so here's a good one for you. Unless Blake, do you have something? You look really, you look really. Excited. No, I just. I say you go from being the man to uh, being humbled quite a bit. Yeah. And it's, it's just an interesting experience. Exactly. So, so that's what I was going to say is like, talk about that, you know, like from when you were like a freshman on the Johnson Dragons team, like I remember being a freshman at Valley, like it was pretty humbling. Um, even though like I was still one of the better players, you know, like I got picked on and bullied and whatever. And then you got like, uh, you go to college and you're, you know, same sort of deal. And then, you know, pro good Lord. I mean, you know, like I've, I've played in a couple of sessions with that level of player and like you're immediately back at the bottom, start again. Yeah. So what's that like, you know, always sort of be trying to prove yourself like every day. I mean, yeah, it's when you come in, if you're a, if you're a freshman in high school, if you're a freshman in college, if you're a first year pro with a new team, people don't, 
necessarily expect much much from you so whatever you do from there is just you know it's only makes you look that much better so i mean but i mean the groups that i've had so even in high school when i first got there i wasn't really picked on yeah freshmen had to carry the balls and all that stuff like always but other than that it was nothing we, we had football players that were on my team though like they were like juniors and seniors they were yeah we had, we had a good team that's why <laughs> we uh semifinals two years that i was there so yeah, no we had a big g- deal no <laughs> big deal <laughs> We won't, we're not we're not comparing uh, those things because yeah, <laughs> as soon as we start comparing things, you win immediately. So, uh, so seriously though, like what, like how do you uh, wrap your head around that every day? I mean, because where are you at right now? I mean, you're in a group of, uh, like, I mean, talk about where you're at now with Omaha. Yeah. So I mean, this is also a really young group of guys. They're all either first, second, third year pros. There's a couple older guys, but everyone's new here. Some guys played USL last year. Some guys were over in lower teams in Europe. But uh, there was one of my teammates now. We had a meeting at the beginning of the season, and he, after the meeting, all the players stuck around, and he was saying how this is so much different than if, say, I go to a team that's already been assembled, and I'm the new guy there. But here, everyone is the new guy. So that's what, you know, everyone connected right away. You know, you, I connect with everyone, make friends with everyone. There's no clicks already you know being formed everyone's new so that made the transition a lot easier because you know we were all new there so um in that sense but yeah it's all young guys that are hungry that want to get you know reach their potential reach the next level if it's usl championship mls everyone's uh, hungry for that so it's uh it's good to be here now because everyone's like you know same goals everything so I think the other part of that too, Elvira, is you're competing against the guy next to you um, for a livelihood, right? So I just, I mean, just talk about how that impacts it a little bit, um, knowing, um, you know, like I said, you guys are all young, you're all in it together, but you're also battling against each other for the spot on the squad uh, to get in the 11 and whatnot. Right, and you say that, I, I think even back to Europe, because when I was over there in Slovenia, my, my first contract, my first team, those are grown men that are, you know, trying to feed their families. So there it's even different. Here we're all youngers, and we're not, you know, if you do something, you do something. A lot of these guys have college degrees, so they'll, they'll be fine with jobs. But over there, it's grown men, you know, they have families, they need, a, you know, they need to perform so they can progress, go to a better team, or even stay there, get a raise, whatever it is. So... Yeah, I mean, you're, you're friends off the field, but when it's on there, everyone's battling for the position, of course, because they're trying to make themselves better and improve. So how's that been different? So, like, I mean, you show up the first day of training in Slovenia, um, you know, and you've got, like, you're in person. You're there to, like, run around and bust your ass. But, like, here you show up for the first day in Omaha and, like, what is it a zoom meeting or like, I mean, maybe you were, you, maybe you were in there before that. I don't know how the timing of it all was, but like, uh, you know, I mean, how are you getting to know yeah. these guys and how are you integrating in the team concept? Yeah, no, we, we'd already went through preseason. Basically we'd already played three games. We'd been training for like, we came in beginning of February. So all February we're training and half of March whenever it started. So we'd already been together. I did, for I did my research, obviously. Yeah, of course, I can tell. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> we went down to Ralph Salt Lake. We're down there at that uh, little camp thing, whatever it is. We played some games down there. And then we went up to Minnesota United and played them. So we were already together. And we'd, uh, the first week, it was just literally meetings. We uh, hadn't started training yet, but we were getting to know each other, doing a little team building stuff. And it went from there. We got onto the field. And, yeah, I mean, it was – it's easy when it's a young group of guys and everyone is in the, in the same position. So it wasn't that. Different. I want to go, I want to go back a little bit. I'm super <coughs> intrigued. And I think some people are, you don't have the cough button over here clearly. Um, but uh, talk about how you, how do you, uh, I mean, you went to UNO for two years, is that right? And yeah. then just, or talking to talk about the process of agents signing a contract in Slovenia, mm-hmm that whole deal because one i don't know it and i think it's pretty interesting um because all we hear about is you know the big main main sports football basketball right uh, whatnot so talk about how that process kind of unfolded for you right so i mean 
my freshman year, it went well. We didn't make the national tournament, but it was, I still had a good, good season, sophomore year also. And that's when um, agents, even before that, really, for me, um, agents have already been reaching out um, from Europe and all that stuff. But a lot of that stuff is uh, you don't know who to trust there because a lot of it is, is sketchy. They're just trying to scam you for money, whatever it is. So you have to really, really be careful who you, who you work with early on like that. Um, there were a couple U.S. agencies my sophomore year that contacted me um, just through, they followed me on Instagram, sent me a message, be like, hey, we're watching you, blah, blah. You know, let's stay in contact for, you know, because they can't really do anything until I, I'm either a senior or because I lose my eligibility if I otherwise. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so after my, after my sophomore, sophomore year, we had the spring semester. And uh, we had an international trip that summer, and we went to Canada. We went to Montreal and Toronto, and we played some games against some teams up there. And after that trip, um, this agent from Europe got in contact with me with a club in Slovenia that was interested. It was a first division team. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, let's talk on the phone. And he called me, and he was like, yeah, they're super interested. Um, the sporting director wants to talk to you as well. And that's when I knew, like, okay, if this guy was – you know, some kind of one like the other guys, he wouldn't have the sporting director's number. He wouldn't want to talk to me. So the next day that sporting director messages me, we get in contact and they're, I guess they saw me online. They saw some of my videos or something and they were super interested. And that agent already had a couple of players um, at that team. So they had a relationship with him and he got in contact with me so I could go through the agent. And um, so he got in contact with me and said they were interested. And this was all over the, uh, my summer after my sophomore season, after that international trip. We had like three weeks since we had to be back on campus for, for fall semester and season. So I'm at home now in Des Moines and uh, talking to him. And he was like, all right, like they want you to, you know, we'll get your ticket, your flight, everything. They want you to come over and, you know, sign without even a trial. So there's no, I didn't go on trial. They just wanted to sign me straight up. And that's when I discussed my family. I got in contact with my college coach at the time, Bob Warming, who's one of the winningest college coaches of all time. He was at Penn State. and then He's a legend. Yep. yep Bob I went to I, camp with him when I was nine years old, Elvira. So the circle <laughs> comes full. There you go. And uh, he's a super good, cool guy. I'm in touch with him all the time. But I got in touch with him then and told him the opportunity and that it was something I couldn't pass up with the offer and all that. And uh, it was tough for him at first to, you know, let me, let me go. He was obviously was worried about me. You know, he didn't want me to make the wrong mistake or this or that. But I'd already made up my mind that I was going to go with this. And, yeah, I flew over there. The next, I came that night. The next morning I go to the club, sign my contract, got my presentation and everything. And, yeah. That must have been exciting. Yeah. It was scary too, but exciting, yeah. Because I had no idea what I was what, getting. <laughs> I mean, so you were 20 or so at this time? I was 20, yeah. 20. 20. What role did your parents play? I mean, you said you talked to them kind of towards the end. Um, yeah. I mean, they're sending their kid back over, um, you know, to your, as a young, I don't know, young adult. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, so my, my mom was more, you know, stay, finish school. But my dad was like, you know, this is your dream, like, go pursue this, you know? So yeah, uh, that's, yeah, that's usually how it is too, you know? <laughs> but, uh, so they, I mean, but at the end they were both really supportive of it and I mean, it was for the better at the time and it is now too. I think I made the right decision with w leaving early and going over there because I gained so much as a player, as a, as a person being on your own in a different country and, uh, overall just a great experience and great decision. I think I made. So not wanting to like veer off of that, but like, quick touch on just the idea of like your college education like you got two years in so mm -hmm. what do you, are you gonna go go back at some point like I mean that's you know I, I love you Alvir I know you're a great player but you can't play forever that's right, right. so I like I mean you know like I'm like how old are we we're 30 we'll be 36 this year Ben <laughs> yeah yeah so at a certain point you know, the, the things start to go. I yeah. you're 
that's not going to happen for you for a bit. But, I mean, so how do you look at that? Do you want to be involved in the game? Like, is that, like, your thing? Or are you going to try and, like, go back to school? Or do you – I don't know. I mean, like, that, that's got to be a thought on your mind as well. Yeah, and it was a thought right when I left. Uh, right when I got there, I waited two months. I had already completed two and a half years at UNO because I came in a semester early in the spring. That's right. So I did two and a half years. So I had a year and a year and a half left. And two months after I signed for that team in Sylvania, I transferred all my credits to SNHU online. And uh, <laughs> I haven't finished yet, though. I t uh, I've been taking breaks here and there. But, uh, you know, I'm working towards that for sure. And I always uh, – um, right now it's a little more difficult because it's, it's not cheap, you know. So um, I'm taking classes here and there. And um, so that's like Southern New Hampshire University, right? That's like yeah. – it's like known for the soccer players. Yeah, I think they're like a sponsor of the MOS. Or yeah, yeah. That could cool. be wrong. I think they are, though. But yeah, That's so cool. I took around to Sylvania. What are you and, studying? Uh, marketing. Very good. And uh, just recently, That's back off that, uh, I got, I'm into real estate. And I know. hey -o. <laughs> So I, I started taking my courses that I didn't do in school, but uh, taking the pre -reg courses and nice. all that stuff to – to get that license here in Nebraska. So good for you. Well, just here's a bit, here's a rec recommendation for you, Elvier. You're a marketing guy. You mentioned Instagram, but you did not drop your handle. So yeah, what do you got? Marketing 101. You got to drop your earlier. You mentioned it. Like what's your Insta handle? All right. You guys you call it. You guys. Yeah. It's, I think is that what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me at, at Elvier, Ibi, Ibi nine. So that's on, that's on everything. That's on, Twitter and Facebook. So. Yeah, so since we're talking social media things of that nature, uh, Elvier, we had to schedule our meeting this evening for a certain time because you had a, an online uh, FIFA match to play. Is that correct? Yeah, so there's a USL. Uh, it's the championship and league one combined. All the teams, there's like a FIFA tournament on Twitch. So uh, I had a game last night and tonight. Oh, hold on. So now, did did you are you did you win like the Omaha Union like tournament, or are you yeah, just the never, only one that plays because you're like young? No, no, no. So we ha we did have a tournament uh, like early on when this first started happening, um, and I got to the semi semifinals at that time. We never ended up finishing it, so um, that doesn't matter. But yeah, so there's this <laughs> other my. my my best friend, Dami, he's a left back. He was, he's from Barcelona, played Iowa Western, and uh, he just signed here also. But uh, he's the best player, best people player on the team. And me and him always play against each other, so that's – I improved my game like that. And uh, one of the guys from the club called Dami and, you know, about this whole thing. And he's like, who are the other good guys, you know? And I was sitting right next to him. I was like, yo, like, say me. I'm trying to play. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said my name and then this other guy, JP. Uh, <laughs> So you said our names and yeah, we're the three guys that are representing Union Omaha at that, at that tournament. Well, so now it's two, right? No, no. So he, are you uh, still in? Yeah. So Dami played two games, JP played two games and I played two games and that was like the first round and now it's going to go back to the top and all the way through again. Oh, so, so the yeah. fact that you guys. Ben, you're okay. showing, you're showing your lack of research again, Ben, because this is all over Twitter right now, and you're clearly not following anything. Of course. But so, you, I mean, you got smoked tonight, didn't you, Elvier? Yeah, well, I smoked the guy last night, 3-0. <laughs> yeah, you can't win them all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when does France play Mexico is my question. I don't know if they've already played. I'm not, I'm, I don't follow it that much, to be honest. I haven't done my research. I just play what Elvier, I'm Elvier, Blake probably knows. Probably does. <laughs> I, do. I don't. I just, I saw, I don't know, USL Omaha. Uh, we follow them. So it's like, uh, so I just, they have all these, all these FIFA games. And yeah. um, <laughs> I don't know. Let's get, I mean, a couple of a couple other selfish questions. So, um, so you're in Slovenia. Uh, talk about that experience. Yeah. So that was, that was even tougher than, going from club to residency when I came there just that level from Had college it. yeah just that level from college going to pros completely different and I came there the first two weeks I couldn't I come back to my apartment my legs were dead like I couldn't just I was getting adjusted to that you know that speed of play all that stuff so it took me like two three weeks to even 
be able to train and like feel good about myself, you know, not feel like everything is dead, you know, from the waist down. But it took me like two weeks. And then, yeah, after that, it was, it was, it was easy for me though, because uh, the language barrier wasn't difficult there. Like it was, we'll talk later on in Germany, but when I got there, I speak Bosnian and they speak Slovenian, but it's, it's very similar. So um, getting to know those guys, being in contact with them, it wasn't that difficult, you know, so that made it, made it a lot easier for me. And then when we started playing, that also translated to the game. But uh, the first two weeks were very difficult just because I, that level. How many languages do you speak? I mean, not just Bosnian. If you want to count all those Yugoslavian countries, it's all pretty much the same. So I can make my Serbian, Croatian, Slovenian, Bosnian, and English. But those are all. <laughs> so what, yeah, what is that like? Ten languages? No, but I mean, they're. I wouldn't count that because they're all. They're all pretty similar. So. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so then, so you're in. Sorry, Ben. Let me jump no, in here. Yeah, please. Uh, chronologically here. So you're in Slovenia, then you end up in Germany. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, in Slovenia. Just out of the, yeah, just talk about how they, how you, I mean, I don't know, did you transfer over there at the end right, of the contract? Right. How'd you end up in Germany? Right. So when I signed there, I signed a three-year contract in Slovenia. And um, like I said, I came in there the first two weeks. It was super tough. But after that, I, you know, won the position battle. I was, I started maybe six, seven games in a row, played like over 80, 80 minutes, all those games. Um, after that, Actually, before that even happened, after those first two weeks, I have previously dislocated my left shoulder. It's popped out of place. So, like, my first exhibition, like, preseason game there, my luck, that happened. It pops, slides out, and then I'm out for, like, two weeks, two and a half weeks maybe. And after that, I come back, you know, get back into it, and then I start, like, six, seven games in a row. And um, that last game before the winter – winter uh the holidays we had like two and a half weeks off three weeks off i came to the states but that last game before that i got my fifth yellow so then uh we came back after the holidays <laughs> let's go back. yellow cards <laughs> came back after the holidays and we had a preseason in turkey we went down to antalya and we were training there we had four matches and um the first two games I was playing quite a bit. And then the second two, the coach was trying to get the, ro uh, like the roster ready for the first game of the season. And I was suspended the first game back. So I wasn't really included in that. Stop. What, what are you getting five yellow cards for? I mean, it happens. I wasn't the only one. So. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying I know. I mean, I've gotten five yellow cards before. But what did you do to get five yellow cards? Oh. Like, you're a – you're a number nine. You're a striker. Like, are you yeah. are you just murdering people, or are you just talking? For uh, to see. A little bit of talking. Yeah. Maybe like two weight tackles on a defender that shouldn't have been yellows. Oh, one for flopping also. So, <laughs> which was which wasn't, but um, those reps were something else there. But uh, yeah, so three talking probably one weight <laughs> weight challenge, one flopping. We'll put it at that. Talking. <laughs> That's too many. <laughs> hey, All right. Sorry. That's your. The game gets the best of you sometimes. You got to, you know, you're frustrated. You're in the game. and uh, I know this. Blake knows this. <laughs> okay. So keep going. How would I stop off? At? Yeah. So that last, the last two pieces of games in Turkey, I'm not in like the 11. I'm not, I played like five, 10 minutes, those two games because I'm suspended for the first game of the season. And uh, we get back, and that other forward, uh, that first game, he scores. I'm back from suspension. I'm not in the roster that next week. He's doing well again. I think he scored two goals that next week. So I'm kind of like, I don't know if I can cuss. But I was like, shoot. Uh, you <laughs> can. You can cuss. No, I don't want to. Okay. What's, <laughs> what's the app? Uh, shoot, does that mean shit? Does that mean yeah. shit? <laughs> there you go. That's the one. <laughs> shit. <laughs> And I was like, all right, shit, uh, this guy's killing it right now, you know. And uh, after that, I was coming in for 15, 20 minutes. The rest of that half season started a couple games. But, uh, yeah, it was tough to get my spot back after that. And uh, that summer comes. Um, we have, like, 10 days off. I go visit family in Bosnia. It's only, like, a five-hour drive. Uh, I come back. We start preseason. And I can tell that the team – 
is going to stick with him, that other player up top, because, like, just the way trainings were and everything. And I was kind of like, if this is going to be the case for this half season, next half season, I might want to talk to my agent to consider, you know, moving team to go somewhere I'm going to play, you know, not just waste my time being on the bench where I could be. And I'm still young at the time. There's a bunch of teams in Europe I can go, you know, go anywhere and play. And which was probably a mistake on my part looking back at it, but um, it is what it is. And I end up ending my contract um, with that team. I didn't end it until late into the summer, which is also ridiculous. But my agent at that time, he's not anymore. Um, he was saying, we're not going to end anything until we for sure find a club. And it ended up happening that we ended and we still had nothing. And he had some trash teams in Croatia, like second division. And I was like, I'm not going to go there, play for like basically anything, <laughs> basically no money. <clears throat> and then um, at this time, like a bunch of agents are contacting me because on transfer market, it says I'm a free player. So, and my resume at that time was pretty decent because I played maybe 17, 18 games in the first division. My score, my goals weren't that great. I only had one goal and one assist, but um, which is also to understand as my first pro contract, it was just a transition, but um, he was like, all these agents are saying like, everything looks good, you know, like you're a player they need, but they see the stats and that's just, you know, they want to forward that scoring, you know, that's efficient in front of goal. And I was like, I mean, it is what it is. That's what I know if I come in there, I can, cause there's a lot of, you can watch my video. There's a bunch of chances I have unlucky, but, and um, yeah, nothing ends up happening. It's getting late in the summer. Um, and this one guy contacts me. He's like, there's this team in Germany fourth division I was like all right like what are they what are they offering like what is it and he says and I was like I mean I have nothing else so <laughs> um I was like all right let's go and I go up there I sign I took a that's like I took a bus up there to Munich and he picked me up it was like a eight hour bus ride and that agent picked me up in Munich we drove up I signed I spent the night there we had dinner he took me back to the uh, bus took a bus back to Slovenia packed up all my stuff in my car and the next day drove up to to Leipzig so what uh what would you do differently I mean it's is it because you were so late in the summer window um yeah I just or what, I'm just curious what would you have yeah. done differently if you had to do it over again looking back if I had to I wouldn't end my contract at all I'd stick it out I'd stay there even though my situation at the time wasn't great um that team there that was a professional team because my experience in Germany was the complete opposite. So I would have stayed there. It's a high level. Um, even just being there until winter, maybe I could have probably found a, found a better team in Europe and possibly still been over there now, but I mean, everything works out how it's, how it's supposed to. And, uh, came to Germany and that was just, uh, it was a cool experience at first because all the attention I was receiving because there's another Ibisevic in, in Germany and uh, all the newspapers were writing about it and all that stuff. And then I get there, I'm the only foreign guy. Everyone else is German. So I'm just there like, all right. <laughs> so you're still the foreign guy. Good yeah. Lord. Yeah, I come there, everyone's German. There's one guy from Czech, Czech Republic, but everyone else is German. How's your German? Are you, can you speak it? That's what we were talking about. No German. <laughs> Not nine. <laughs> I can speak it. Nine. <laughs> nine at all. And uh, some of the guys knew English a little bit. Some guys didn't at all. There were some guys that knew no English. So that was difficult. Uh, there was one guy, his dad was Croatian and he, um, we connected right away, me and him. Um, but he spoke really good English. So that's the guy like hung out with all the time, but. Yeah, just the experience from that and the playing, the level, it dropped so much from Slovenia. And then I was just frustrated. And yeah, winter came and I was like, I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> so how's it been in Omaha? It's been good. So even, so I was talking to you now, like that summer when I was looking for a club, uh, Jay Mims hit me up and he was like, hey, we're starting a team, all this stuff. Like, I want you to come back. And this was in summer. They weren't going to sign any players until January, I think. But he gets in contact with me in the summer. He's like, I'm looking at players now. He's like, I want to bring you back. And I was like, all right, 
that was cool. Like I, that was something that was in the back of my mind, but I wanted to stay in Europe, you know, because I was already there. I know the level is for sure higher from my experience in Slovenia. What's and in the back of your mind? What do you mean? You said you had something in the back of your mind. Oh, that. I kept that in the back of my mind. Going oh, to okay. Signing for, yeah, <laughs> signing for Union Omaha at the time. But the thing was, I wouldn't be playing that whole, you know, that whole season, that whole fall. I would be, I would be without a team. And he was trying to work something out to loan me out to a championship te- USL championship team. But I'd ended my contract too late and all the papers there. So I couldn't do that. Couldn't play any games there. So I was like, no, nah, I'm going to like go here. I'm going to try it in Germany. That's like, I just got that offer at, right after that. I was like, I'm going to go try this. And then didn't end up working out. That winter, I had my contract right before I go home. I come back with holidays to Des Moines, see family. I'd already ended my contract. I fly back, pack up all my stuff, come back to the States, and I'd already signed. I just actually stayed in Germany for two weeks after I ended my contract until maybe January 14th. I stayed at a buddy's house too because I had no apartment because I ended my contract so they had to give back the apartment. So I stayed at this guy. He played at, he's from Kentucky. He played at Creighton. So I knew him pretty well. And he was maybe like an hour away. So I went over to his place. I stayed, I stayed with him for two weeks and booked my flight. I was still talking to agents at that time, trying to find something in Europe, but nothing came. And I was like, all right, I'm going back. And I came back, signed for, for Omaha. And yeah. Came into preseason February 1st, and it's been good so far. One of the, I don't know, Ben, you look like you're eager to ask, but uh, during this time, you get a Bosnian national team cap. So, I, I mean, I think that's – I'm interested, one, I think that's the coolest story. Mm-hmm. I'm interested, one, to see where that ranks for uh, – on your – um, resume and whatnot, but also talk about that experience playing in the U.S. with them against um, the U.S. and whatnot. Yeah, that was actually when I was at UNO. So that was in college when I made the made the cap. That was after my sophomore season, and um, yeah, I got I was in my dorm room that December. They played the game was January 28th, I believe, down in LA, and that it was like December something. And my dad texts me, and he's like. Uh, there's a chance that you'll get called up uh, to the national team for the upcoming, you know, the USA tour thing. I was like, what? Um, he was like, yeah, some guy contacted him and, you know, like they'll probably be in touch with you. And like five days after that, the thing that I, they get in contact with me and they're like, yeah, you're getting called up. The list comes out, the roster for the game. And uh, yeah, I was still training at UNO with coach. We were doing like our little sessions with the team and everything. And I flew down there. I met with the guys. We trained for three days. We had three sessions. And then the game, I got subbed on in the 80, 82nd, 83rd minute. Um, and, yeah, I was talking on that previous podcast. I, I, I go blank when I think about it because I can't remember anything that happened. If I'm being honest, <laughs> it was just all like so, so surreal that I even got a chance to get called up for my country to represent them, to get on the field. And, uh, yeah, it was just a super cool experience. Do you think it meant more that it was, the game was held in the U S or, um, if it was in Bosnia, what, I mean, I, I don't, I think that's super cool. Cause yeah. I think your parent, I mean, I remember seeing pictures like your dad was definitely out there, right? Your family yeah. came out. Yeah. My yeah. dad and my brother and coach Mims came, they had, uh, had VIP tickets up there. So <laughs> they were in the box at StubHub in LA. But uh, yeah, what was the question again you were saying? I'm, I'm just curious, like, did it mean more to you that it was yeah. in the US or, yeah, yeah. Um, kind of a, or not? Yeah, so it's like kind of a coincidence. I played for the U17 US. I grew up in US, but uh, in the US, but I'm Bosnian. And then getting to play against the US for my country, it was, you know, it all kind of came together there and it was a, it was a super cool experience. So uh, the weird question, I guess, is just like, how does that play into your identity? You know, as a young, young man, I mean, that's like such an interesting thing. Like you've, you've played for the country of your origin, but like now you live in the United States mm-hmm. and you play here. Uh, and I, I would guess you still identify as, you know, like at least, uh, a portion of your life is an American life. I mean, I, obviously you went to high school here, uh, college here, 
Like, mm -hmm. how does that all work? Yeah, so I mean, even from a younger age, when I was growing up at home, it was all, it was all Bosnian. So it was, I stayed super, super attached to the culture, to the traditions, everything. So I'm- Is your Bosnian still strong? Yeah, it's 100% fluent. Um, can you write it? Yeah, I can write, read, everything. So Ooh, I, I was talking to Hoos. You should talk to Hoos about this. I don't know if he can still write and- uh... I don't know. I saw some pictures the other day of him playing still. The other day. They have that new team. Did you see that team? <laughs> I don't know about that team. Uh, it was like a bunch of Bosnian guys together. But I, I like that. In Des Moines, there's a bunch of us. And, you know, we're super, you know, super Bosnian. You know, we, we but it's our... super important to keep your language and your culture, right? For sure. That was, that's a big thing, uh, especially with my family. That's what, something they wanted. You know, they didn't want, want me to lose that like a lot of a lot of people do is that and it's you know it's a shame because that's that's where you're from you know if you don't have that then but um yeah but I mean I grew up here so uh, of course my whole life was in the U.S. but uh at home um we go visit every summer visit family in Bosnia so I'm super super close to everyone there I speak and um, I identify myself as Bosnian American I guess <laughs> so I, I'm super close to both Super close to both. Yeah, no, I'm no judgment. I think it's great. I, I'm just curious how it works. I mean, it must yeah. be tough. And like, I think it's super cool how uh, important the culture is to you guys. Yeah, yeah, it's something that everyone's super passionate about there. And you know, just even the game, even playing soccer. That's how I got got into it. Watching the national team, watching my cousin play, and everyone just it was big on that. So. But yeah, just having that tradition, that culture. You made me there you go, Blake. There's your segue. I said the tee up, right? Like uh, so good. The best fill in the blank here. Fill in the blank. The best Bosnian that has played in Iowa is. Are you asking me? Yeah. Well, I'm not it's asking not, myself. He's not asking me. <laughs> I'm not asking Ben either. I, no, that, that that's not going to fly here. Like you have to answer the question. Like the best Bosnian that's played in Iowa is who? You cut out. I think. Say it again over here. Me. Hell. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, if you listen to our last, was it our two pods ago? Um, I think with Armin. That's what I said. That was my answer. Ben. Uh, so unfortunately, I figure it's ben one of the old boys. I figure it's one of the old boys. Like, Sorry, over here. <laughs> do you know you know uh like Bessem and um like Fa? Like they're old they're old guys. Yeah. Uh, maybe if I saw their name, if I saw them, maybe. But yeah, yeah. See that's I think those are those are your boys. Like Faru it's Farud, I think. And then uh Fa? I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I agree with you, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> thank you ben <laughs> so on, on the second part of that question uh somebody just snorted by the way uh, wasn't me ben? <laughs> <I> was <like laughs> <that. laughs> maybe i said maybe it was mamba uh so ever you've you've uh you've traveled through all around the world you've played some um some really high levels who was give us some uh i don't know maybe the top two or three players you have played with and against in your career so far? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, against Let's Tristan see. Caldrake. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> no, best player I played against. Oh, uh, let me think. When I was in Germany, actually, my first, the first game I played for them, it was uh, like a friendly, friendly game, and we played against Frankfurt, Eintracht Frankfurt, and uh, played against Bastos. And uh, that forward that came from Milan, what was his name? I'm blanking on his name right now. Blake's Blake. really good with the European soccer. So, Blake, you know those guys, right? I haven't written let's, that. Let's say, like, let's, let's just uh, – we'll continue this conversation while he looks it up here. So, name the club again, Elvira. Andre yes. Silva. You played Andre. against – Yeah, it was Eintracht, okay. Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, You've heard okay. of them, Blake. You had to have heard of them. Yeah. Yeah, I know they are. <laughs> But yeah, so Bas Dost and Andre Silva, they're both played up top there. So those are probably the two best I played against. Just watch. I was on the bench. I came on in the 60th minute. That was my first game. 
But uh, just watching the way they move, their touch, insane. But you can tell that's next level. Um, best player I played with? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Probably in Slovenia, there was this guy, Rudy. Uh, Rudy Pojek Vansash was his name. Uh, he was with me that first year. And then when I left, he also left and signed for the best team in, best team in Slovenia, Marbor, who played Champions League maybe three years ago. Um, but he went and signed for that team, plays for a Slovenian national team. Guy has like five, six caps. But he's really technical. He's like a left, left winger, attacking mid, number 10. Uh, probably the best player I played with so i'm super curious to like i kind of want to go like deep on how are you guys handling like soccer and getting back to life and like training and all that kind of stuff but i don't want to waste a bunch of time on that at the same time so just give us like the short version quick yeah like yeah. So I mean, you said you're doing Zoom meetings, so that's super cool. But like, are yeah. you training at all, or like, what are you doing? Yeah, so, like Push-ups in your front room? <laughs> yeah. So when it first uh, when it first all got bad, practice was canceled. Everything season was done. Um, we started doing Zoom calls literally almost every day, uh, at least every other day, and we'd have different activities. We'd be doing um, get to know your teammates. So he coach would pick two players to make a list of four questions like funny questions, you know, just to get to know your teammates and everyone would go around and answer the questions. So that was one day we had like a cooking competition. They brought us like, they brought us food, uh, groceries, and they're like, all right, you're in groups of three. Um, you have to make a meal with using this stuff. So it's like chopped on Zoom. And we all cooked. We had 30 minutes to make a meal. So we did that one day. Was we that just, Hominoff's idea? I don't know. I don't, maybe. <laughs> now that I think about it, maybe. <laughs> um so yeah that's a, that's a great question ben because i was going to ask about him so that's perfect <laughs> but uh yeah so we've just been doing all kinds of stuff they've been sending us um optional training things for, throughout the week you know like running treadmill stuff we have a gym downstairs in the apartments just that stuff you know some body weight stuff weight stuff and then just this week we started training um outside finally uh but it's groups of four only no more than four players and the coaches can't coach, and it's still optional. So if you want to come, but most so guys, what do you do? Just like kick a ball at each other. Yeah, and it's no contact. So like for the first part, we warm up for 15 minutes. Then we do some passing stuff. You know, some sequences. We get some touches there. Some finishing. You know, crossing and finishing. You know, some combination, ping it out, crossing, finishing, and then fitness at the end. So there's no contact really, but it's just you know getting touches. That sounds really fun. Yeah. Until you get to the fitness. Then. I was going to say, it all sounds like <laughs> fitness to me. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we've been doing. We just started this week, or last week we started. So we've had like six sessions now. It's only three times a week too, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it's optional. So, but everyone's okay. going. It's fun. Okay, so like, what's the plan? When do you guys go back to it? Yeah, and, so uh, when you do, what's your first goal celebration? We'll see. But, uh, yeah, we're just waiting now. We have no idea either. Um, we're waiting here back from the week. There's just recently some um, bargaining agreement things. They're trying to, you know, cut our salaries. So the players, players union is, like, talking to them to, you know, not, not take off because, I mean, we're already not getting paid that much. So it wouldn't be fair to be taking, you know, a percentage off of that. Um, but, yeah, so we're just waiting now. We don't know with this whole thing that's going on when we'll, we'll be able to like get into big groups, start training. But for now it's just all, all small groups, which is all right. For now. I think if we want to like make this podcast go viral, we could have really hit him all on this, uh, players union bargaining let's chip. Players but... union. Let's go. <laughs> He's a friend of the pod, a friend of the pod. No, so, no, let's not. Do what that. do we, what's the hashtag so, play, player support or something like that? Players United, something. Yeah, something like stand with the players. Stand I with mean, the players, there you go. You know, Alvier, we'll just go ahead and stick up for you here. Like, you know, you, you're doing a job, so yeah. don't look, stick with your guns, buddy. Of course. Fight for the people. Have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so, Alvier, we could probably grill you for maybe another hour if we wanted to. 
you have time? So are you ready, Olivier? <laughs> as long as you guys have questions, I'll, I'll be answering them. So. No, uh, we, we feel like we've right. taken probably enough of your time. And, yeah, it's all good. I mean, you're a, you're a class, a class young man all the way around, a young man, uh, a full scholar. Almost. I'm there. And a gentleman. Thank so, you. Appreciate that, man. I appreciate you guys. Uh, take care of yourself. And like, we really do hope to uh, see you back here in Des Moines. Yeah. Probably uh, in, in uh, the Christmas window. Will you yeah. be a part of our tournament? Tell I us. Will. Yes. Say yes. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll make an appearance. <laughs> Are you on my team? I love it. Hey, we'll see. We'll see who's, who's signing up after probably being with the boys. But if you want to join us. Oh, I don't what? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? All right. <laughs> All I heard was that you're going to be there. So, all right. I'll see you at Christmas time. But all good right. luck until then. Hey, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Elvira. Yeah. Thanks. All right, Blake. That was a super fun conversation. I say that every time, but I mean it. Yeah, I mean, Elvira. Uh, has grown has grown up since the last time I've you know, uh, really had much interaction with him and now you know again you forget there he's an adult now just mature grown up and I really enjoyed enjoyed hearing it I learned a lot and I thought it was pretty cool and hopefully for some of our younger listeners that's a, a story or a life story it's there's still a lot to be written uh, but something that they should look forward to trying to emulate yeah, exactly. And I mean, I think that's ultimately why we have somebody like him on the pod. He's, he's a great role model for even us old folks sometimes, probably. He's a, he's a sharp young cat. Yeah, I mean, and of course, the Johnson Dragon connection. Um, you like never... that, don't you? I do. I love it. I mean, th those dragons never let us down when we need them. They always come through for us. The drag that tonight. All right. Well, so let's. So quickly... Ben, um, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, oh, I thought you were going. Lead us, Blake. You know, lead, um, us. lead us. We have to do our so. We have to get our social media put. Um, you know, marketing plugs in, and then would you um, play a little tune for us to take us away? Oh, well, let's talk about social media first. So uh, Twitter, we're at kick underscore forward. Facebook is at kick it forward. I a Instagram is kick dot it dot forward. By the way, somebody please talk to our social media guy. Cause he has no idea about the word consistency. And then on TikTok, what are we on TikTok? We're kick dot it dot forward and finally youtube <laughs> <Slash> US. is <laughs> yeah i think you have to just search kick it forward on youtube <laughs> all right well if you guys are lucky maybe i'll play the guitar we still haven't gotten any dms have we got take any us DMs? out ben any dms take us yeah, somebody just actually just slid into him the other day. Just said, "I would love for Ben to take us out with a little musical." All right. Well, I'm gonna have to work on that. Mm -hmm.